Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 LGBTQIA couples in TV shows. Are you okay? I am now. For this list, we'll be looking at the most beloved and iconic queer relationships on the small screen. This will not include any animated couples, as they deserve a list of their own. We'll be talking about specific plot points for the TV shows featured, though, so take this as your spoiler warning. Who are your favorite canon LGBTQIA couples on TV? Did they make the list? Number 20. Ray Holt and Kevin Cosner, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. One day, I hope to live up to the standard you set. You make me want to have a wetter brain. Oh, Kevin. Brooklyn Nine-Nine made headlines when they confirmed that Officer Rosa Diaz was bisexual, leading to the characters' on-screen relationships with a number of women. But as much as we love Rosa, there's no denying that the show's original queer rep will always be our fave. You will never lose me. I'll do anything to keep you. I'll compromise on everything. The work, the... Captain Ray Holt and Kevin Cosner are revealed to be a couple in the show's first season, and we gradually learn details about their sometimes strange but always loving relationship throughout the series. Brooklyn Nine-Nine's final season did show the couple going through a bit of a rough patch, but thankfully by the end of the series, they were renewing their wedding vows, finally comfortable enough to have a real, unrushed ceremony. It's not something you can memorize or an equation you can solve for. It's the feeling you get when you look in your partner's eyes. And that feeling is all that matters. Number 19. Adam Torres and Becky Baker, Degrassi The Next Generation Adam and Becky may have been a straight couple, but Adam's identity had such a significant impact on their relationship that we would be remiss not to include them. Wait a minute. You panicked over a potential gambling problem, but the fact that he's trans is totally fine? He's transient? Like homeless? After all, Adam was transgender, and Becky came from a very Christian household. This initially caused a rift between the pair, as Becky opposed a play Adam was promoting for its gay themes. But burgeoning romantic feelings for her adversary led her to becoming more open and understanding. They had an enemies-to-lovers progression, overcoming pushback from Becky's parents and becoming an imperfect but iconic Degrassi couple. Please don't go. I'll be home before you know it. Besides, you have your counselor job to keep you busy. I'll already be busy missing you. Unfortunately, their story and Adam's life were cut short after a tragic accident. Attempting to make things right after a fight, his last message professed his love for Becky. Number 18. Carson Shaw and Greta Gill, A League of Their Own Life can be tough for the LGBTQIA community, even in their modern day, so it's hard to imagine being queer in the 1940s. I always like to make sure that I'm seen on a man's arm. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just one of the rules that I have to keep myself safe. Adapted from the 90s film, Amazon Prime Video's A League of Their Own makes an attempt at illustrating that reality through the varied lives of its gay protagonists. Although we love Max, Lupe, and Joe, it's Carson and Greta who really take center stage. Greta seems to have been out to herself and her close friends for a while, but Carson is just now coming to terms with her attraction to women, providing a nice contrast that leads to interesting conflict. Wait, can we, can't, can we just go somewhere and talk? No, we're home now. We're not in our little room. And absence makes the heart grow stronger. And when the pair aren't at odds with each other, their mutual support for each other on and off the field is truly something to admire. Number 17. Rue Bennett and Jules Vaughn – Euphoria Despite all the mayhem, there's no denying that Rue and Jules are the show's heart. Individually, they are two of Euphoria's most complex and well-crafted characters, and together, they are its best couple. I'm not I, I, mad at you. Just the best thing that's happened to me in a really long time, and I, I just, I, I just don't want anything bad to happen. So just please don't be mad at me, okay, Joel? The girls first meet in the pilot episode and immediately hit it off. 
Although they are initially just friends, it's not long before they make their deeper feelings for each other official. Rue's substance use disorder causes the pair to have some dramatic ups and downs, but their mutual love and understanding for each other is obvious even when they're apart. Are you sure you're okay? It's unclear whether the couple will end Euphoria's run in a relationship, but we're hopeful they'll stay in each other's lives all the same. Number 16. Danny Clayton and Jamie Taylor – The Haunting of Bly Manor He said it was a ghost story. It isn't. No? It's a love story. Following the success of The Haunting of Hill House, no one could have guessed that the next installment in Mike Flanagan's miniseries-based anthology would not only tell a chilling ghost story, but a profound, sapphic love story. Danny and Jamie were both employed at Bly Manor, the former as an au pair and the latter as a gardener, when paranormal occurrences began happening at the residence. While investigating the source of the strange happenings, the two came to understand each other and eventually fell in love. I know what it feels like. I feel like you can't find your their ensuing romance was as beautiful as it was tragic, with the pair devoting their lives to each other with the knowledge that Danny would one day become the Lady of the Lake. Number 15. Connor Walsh and Oliver Hampton – How to Get Away with Murder Connor and Oliver's relationship started out as one of convenience. I don't work in the cool part of the company if that's what you're thinking. I'm in IT. IT? No, I, I think IT's very cool. Oliver had information that Connor needed, and Connor decided that seducing him was the best way to get it. Fortunately, it wasn't long before that gave way to genuine affection. Connor owned up to using Oliver, apologized, and soon thereafter, the pair established what became How to Get Away with Murder's best relationship. In a show where deceit is second nature, Connor and Oliver were ride or die for each other. My dream was you. In the second season, Connor almost shot Annalise for threatening Oliver, and even during the couple's temporary breakup, Oliver made sure that Connor still had a place to call home. Number 14. Nomi Marks and Amanita Kaplan – Sense8 It's rare to see transgender characters on TV that are actually written by transgender creators, and rarer still for those characters to be allowed such loving and supportive same-sex relationships. In this respect, Nomi and Amanita are as revolutionary off-screen as they are on it. The two meet at a bookstore, and shortly thereafter attend Pride together, where Amanita defends Nomi so passionately that Nomi is moved to tears. I'm not crying because of her. I'm crying because no one's ever defended me before. <laughs> After this event, the couple became inseparable, with Neats even helping Nomi discover more about her life as a sensate. By the end of the series, the couple have been through a lot together, and finally sealed the deal on their relationship with an enchanting wedding ceremony. This is my future. And I trust this feeling more than I have trusted anything in my life. Number 13. Isaac Walterschen and Evan Beck Naisheim. Scum. So you just me, little. Take on your letter. Pop the clap. So. <laughs> so I leave it you. <laughs> Scum proved to be a popular series for Norway, spawning several spin offs across the globe, and its third season only helped to solidify its unique place in pop culture. Breaking streaming records in Norway, the third season of Scum focused on the love story between Isaac Walterschen and Evan Nesheim two boys who come to terms with their sexuality and love for each other in Oslo. They didn't get together right away, but once they did, their love story was magic, every minute of it. Their popularity led to many of the show's spin-offs, including their own versions of the couple, the most interesting of which was Drux, Matteo, and David. Number 12. Willow Rosenberg and Tara McClay Buffy the Vampire Slayer Five years after Roseanne and Friends featured same-sex weddings, Buffy the Vampire Slayer made TV history by having series regular Willow Rosenberg enter a same-sex relationship. That's great. 
You know, I mean, I think, I think Tara's a, a really great girl, Will. She is. And there's something between us. Her romantic connection with Tara McClay became the first long-term lesbian relationship on American television, and their scene in bed together was considered history-breaking for a broadcast network series. Sure, some would argue that it also brought the bury your gaze trope to modern TV, but we're still glad that Willow and Tara got to enjoy a happy and healthy relationship during their time together. It's magic I can tell how you set me free, brought me out so easily. And after such a turbulent relationship with Oz, that was just what Willow needed. Number 11, Nick Nelson and Charlie Spring, Heartstopper. It's hard to imagine a sweeter couple than Heartstopper's Nick and Charlie. My life is way better because I met you. You don't have to say that. I do. And I'll keep on saying it until you believe me. The pair are the epitome of teenage romance, with pining and awkwardness that naturally progresses to a real, loving relationship. Even before they officially get together, there's no shortage of cute moments between the two. In the show's second episode, the pair were already making snow angels, learning to play the drums, and taking naps together on the couch. Just one episode later, they had their first kiss, and realized their feelings for each other had been mutual all along, even if Nick wasn't entirely sure of his sexuality yet. You okay? I... Now that they've figured themselves out and have a supportive friend group, we're excited to see where their journey takes them next. Number 10, David Rose and Patrick Brewer, Schitt's Creek. Everyone's favorite sitcom about a socialite family that literally ends up in Schitt's Creek has proven time and time again to be skilled at handling themes concerning identity. Um, I do drink red wine, but I also drink white wine. Oh. And I've been known to sample the occasional rosé. And a couple summers back, I tried a Merlot that used to be a Chardonnay. Starting as business partners before taking the next step, David and Patrick are simply at their best when together, be it romantically or as the owners of Rose Apothecary. And it can't be wrong. Take my heart and make it strong, babe. Cause you're simply the best. Better than all the rest. These two are made for each other, with David's sarcasm and creativity being well-matched by Patrick's more professional and grounded nature. As an extension of Schitt's Creek's feel-good tone, David and Patrick's relationship is sweet, uplifting, and a ton of fun. Standing in front of me. This just felt like the perfect place to ask you to marry me. Number 9, Mason Hewitt and Corey Bryant, Teen Wolf. Hey guys. Are you volunteering for the library cleanup too? Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yeah. Mason and Corey's chemistry is undeniable from the start, even if their relationship takes a while to come to fruition. However, sparks begin to fly halfway through season five. You have no idea what to say to me, do you? Not really, no. Can I ask you a question then? <laughs> Yeah, sure. What are you doing Saturday night? While these two meet in less than ideal circumstances, as Corey has just been transformed into a chimera and Mason would later be used as a vessel for the Beast of Gavadin, both guys repeatedly show an unflinching willingness to risk everything for each other. Even as members of warring gangs, Mason and Corey continue to prioritize each other, because certain things are more important than pack loyalty. Stay alive with me. Number 8, Nicole Hot and Waverly Earp, Winona Earp. Hey, excuse me, what is your problem? What happened to friends? With all the resurrected outlaws, vampires, and supernatural creatures running amok, it's a wonder anything positive can flourish in the town of Purgatory. Despite the best efforts of a possessive demon and Champ Hardy, Waverly and Nicole's bond blooms beautifully after the two first meet in Shorty's bar. Along with being beyond adorable together and sharing some truly memorable makeout sessions, Waverly and Nicole support each other unconditionally, even when they're individually struggling with their own identities. 
Whether celebrating Christmas or owning some vampires, Nicole and Waverly are always melting hearts. I'd still be standing here. <laughs> Do you hate it? No, I don't hate it. Of course I know. <laughs> Number seven, Brian Kinney and Justin Taylor. Queer as folk. How's it going? You had a busy night? Just uh, checking out the bars, you know? Focusing squarely on the lives of gay men and women, Queer as Folk helped pave the way for many of the other couples on this list. Lindsay and Melanie's mature but difficult relationship deserves an honorary mention, but Brian and Justin's romance serves as the main thrust for the majority of the five seasons. Yes what? Yes. Yes. I will marry you. I will marry you. Much older and free-spirited, Brian is idolized by the 17-year-old Justin, who is only beginning to come to grips with his orientation during the first season. Kinda young, aren't you? In some ways, Brian is the hero that motivates Justin to accept himself. On the other hand, in Justin, Brian found something more meaningful than one night stands. Number six, Santana Lopez and Brittany S. Pierce, Glee. Starting as friends with benefits and ending with a joint wedding alongside Kurt and Blaine, Santana and Brittany go through quite a lot during Glee's run. Is that really how you feel? Uh, yeah. Along with lovers, Santana and Britney are best friends, ones who also happen to complete each other. Britney's enthusiasm and kindness rub off on Santana, while also giving the cheerleader the confidence to sing her feelings. And I feel that when I'm with you, it's alright. I know it's right. Something similar happens in reverse with Santana protecting the often naive Britney. Santana and Britney both go through journeys of self-discovery, and the trials can be overcome because they are in this together. You know, it's funny. I spend months tangled up in knots, and in five minutes, you strain me out. Number five, Cameron Tucker and Mitchell Pritchett, Modern Family. We adopted a baby. <laughs> Her name is Lily. Oh, exciting! Uh, just turn it off. The living embodiment of the phrase, opposites attract, Cam and Mitchell could not be more different. Yet, they're also kind of perfect for each other. Since Modern Family is a comedy, Cam and Mitchell shine the brightest while at their funniest, with their conflicting personalities producing one of the strongest dynamics on the show. A little bit louder now. Shout! A little bit louder now. Shout! Hey, 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 hey! Really, Cam? My job is at stake here, and oh, who are we kidding? You can obviously hear me. The couple is more than just a source of great comedy, though, as Cam and Mitchell challenge conventional gender roles by re-examining what it means to be masculine or feminine, often blending the best qualities of both in a way that is both hilarious and inspiring. But I just wanted you to see what its definition for mother was on it. It's warm, nurturing, supportive. I, you know, maybe when the world sees you Not as a mom- just the world. Fine, fine, me too. But maybe this is what we're seeing, and I don't know why that's such a bad thing. It certainly doesn't make you less of a man, right? Number four, Steph and Lena Adams Foster, The Fosters. I told them I met a woman that I can't live without, and I, I belong with you, Lena. Centering around a lesbian couple who adopt four children of various ethnicities, along with having one of their own, The Fosters is a refreshing take on the family drama genre. Steph and Lena are rightfully the stars of the show, and their relationship is one that feels authentic. You are a piece of work. But you're my piece of work. These two undoubtedly love each other, so much so, Steph and Lena get married twice throughout the series. That said, The Fosters does not shy away from testing the couple's bond. How are you okay with losing our home, all the memories that we have here. I'm not okay. I'm not okay at all. With the stress that comes from parenting a large family and working challenging jobs, Steph and Lena disagree often, but that's just one part of their enduring relationship. Number three, Ian Gallagher and Mickey Milkovich, Shameless. 
Shameless does not have time for the picturesque or easy, so Ian's relationship with the thuggish Mickey is anything but romanticized. Despite multiple breakups and the occasional stint behind bars, Mickey and Ian are naturally drawn to each other. In the earliest seasons, these two engage in an intense but borderline toxic secret romance while Mickey struggles to come out to his family. You don't understand this Oh, I do understand. I understand better than anyone that you're afraid of your father. You're afraid of your wife. You're afraid to be who you are. When Mickey is finally in a good place, Ian begins to spiral out of control, ensuring the couple only experiences short bursts of happiness. I'm worried about you. I love you." Mickey and Ian might occasionally bring out the worst in each other, but the couple represents Shameless at its best. Number 2. Clark Griffin and Lexa – The Hundred Maybe we do. The brightest flames burn the quickest. One is the leader of the Sky People, the other is in charge of the Grounders. Clark and Lexa are both young, saddled with responsibility, and willing to make the tough decisions. I've come to make you an offer. This is not a negotiation. Considering their shared similarities, it's not surprising that these two ended up falling for each other, creating a love powerful enough to unite clashing clans. You couldn't kill Quint. You couldn't leave me to die. That was weakness. I thought love was weakness. Mockery is not the product of a strong mind, Clark. The Hundred's Earth is too hostile for anything pure to endure for too long. However, while it lasted, Clark and Lexa brought love, desire, and comfort to an otherwise harsh world. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Magnus Bain and Alec Lightwood – Shadowhunters You never see so amaze me, Alec. Yeah. What did I just do? A ship so irresistible, Shadowhunters just went ahead and devoted an entire episode to it, not to mention the trilogy of books dedicated to Magnus and Alec's adventures. From the moment the immortal warlock and the still-closeted Nephilim meet in a club, Magnus and Alec only have eyes for each other, even if the timing is not quite right for the couple to be together. You've unlocked something in me. Throughout all three seasons, Magnus and Alec's interactions are defined by warmth, unbridled desire, and provocative flirtation. At times, Malik is the stuff of fairy tales. At others, Magnus and Alec present an attainable ideal worth striving for. The love I have for you is a love that knows no bounds. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.